This lesson is for day seven, linear programming. Uh, this is a, a technique basically that's used in the real world um, for business application problems. So let's say you wanted to figure out what your max profit could be um, when you sell two different items. You would use this process, um, this technique, linear programming, in order to figure out um, what the most profitable um, option for you is. So basically this could be something that you might end up doing one day in the real world, so hopefully you like it. Okay, so when you're solving a linear programming problem, make sure you're reading the problem and then read it again just to basically get a very good understanding of what the question is asking. Always define your variables. This is a, skip, uh, a step that a lot of students skip. So define your variables because it, it not only helps you, but it's worth points, so do it. Um, your your th next step is to find your objective quantity. Now, an objective quantity is just what you're trying to either minimize or maximize in terms of the word problem. So a lot of times this could be profit or it could be minimizing cost, that kind of thing. Um, you're going to also find your constraints, and these constraints are your inequalities. So we're going to basically be graphing inequalities like what we've been doing in the past. So next you graph them. So that's pretty straightforward. You've done this a lot. And then you're going to find your corner points for your feasible region. So that's that word that came up again before. Um, so basically all you're doing when you find your corner points is solving a system. Okay. Again, or just more skills that you've been doing and practicing um, during this chapter. Then finally, you're going to test those corner points. So once you figure out what your corner points are, you will test those corner points inside your objective quantity to figure out which one produces the actual maximum or the minimum that you're looking for. And then finally, make sure you answer your, uh, the, the actual question in a complete sentence. So let's begin. We have this tickets problem. Please pause the video right now and read this question. I want you to make sure you're familiar with um, all the parts because I'm just going to go ahead and dive right into the question, so I'm not going to read it out loud to you. So please pause and read the question. All right, our first step is always to define our variables, so make sure you're very explicit about what X and Y are going to equal. In this case, it's the number of business tickets sold and the number of tourist tickets sold, not just business ticks or tourist tickets, which is what a lot of students will just write here. So make sure you're very explicit. Now, um, the reason why I know that those are the variables is because it asks me how many tourist class ticket seats should they sell, which means um, that's an unknown. So if this is one of your unknowns, then your other unknown should probably be the other type of ticket that they sell, which is the business class ones. So um, that's going to, you know, be a, a tool for you to just read the problem and try to find clues as to what your variable should be. Now, your objective quantity is um, relating to maximizing profits, okay? So we want to maximize profits, which means we're going to go towards the sentence that talks about um, how much profit they make. And right here it says they make $40 profit for business class tickets and $45 for tourist tickets, which means our objective quantity should be 40x plus 45y. And now, um, it's, not an, it's not an equation necessarily, I mean, you can write equals profit but um, we don't know what that quantity is, so I can't set it equal to something specific. Um, now let's list our constraints. Um, to charter the plane, at least five business class tickets must be sold. So X must be greater than or equal to five. Um, at least nine tourist class tickets must be sold as well. So Y must be uh, greater than or equal to nine. Now it goes without saying that <clears throat> X should also be um, greater than or equal to zero and Y should be greater than or equal to zero because you can't have a negative number of tickets sold, but we don't need to include that. And then um, the last sentence here says the plane does not hold more than 30 passengers, which means that total X plus Y must be less than or equal to 30. All right, so these are the, the constraints now that I need to graph. Um, I actually want to do this one in green, so we have a different color for each line, so x plus y should be less than or equal to 30. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, you can pause and graph this on your own, but I'm going to go ahead and graph this. Now when you're adjusting your scale, um, this only has to go up to 30, right? We have two intercepts at 0, 30 and 30, 0. And I have a, a graph here that's um, up, goes up by to 20, I believe, so I'm going to make each one of these um, go up by 2. So you want to try to um, use an appropriate scale, like I wouldn't want to go up to a thousand obviously, um, and I also wouldn't want to go up to 20 necessarily because you know 20 doesn't really show the uh, the endpoints here, so or the, I'm sorry, the intercepts of that line. So I'm going to choose 40, okay? So if you guys want to go ahead, pause, and uh, go ahead and graph those lines now. Alright, now upon graphing this, um, I see that I have a feasible region here um, that has three corner points. 
going to label those A, B, and C. Now, to find A, B, and C, uh, we need to solve systems. Now, these systems are very basic. Um, we won't be giving you such easy systems to solve um, in, in all of your homework or your test questions. But this one, I just wanted to show you, um, just so you get the general idea, but let's, let's try point A. Now, point A is the intersection of the uh, green line, so the line um, x plus y is less than or equal to 30, and the red line, x is greater than or equal to 5. So you're just solving the system. In other words, if x equals 5, then y would equal 25. So we have the point 5, 25. Okay, and that would be this corner point here. And for point B, same thing goes here. We're now solving the system with, um, again, x plus y is less than or equal to 30. And the blue line, y is greater than or equal to 9. And if y is equal to 9, then x should equal 21. So we have coordinate 21, 9. And then finally, the point uh, C. This is the intersection of the red and the blue line. And we result in point C. Um, this one's really straightforward. It should be 5, 9. All right, now that we have our corner points, we are going to test these corner points to find our actual max or min. And now when you test these, you're testing them in the objective quantity. So you'll test this in the objective quantity. And in this case, we're trying to maximize our profit. So we're looking at 40x plus 45y, which is our profit here. And we're just going to plug in our coordinates, uh, 525 into here, uh, the point 21.9 and 5.9 to see which one of these produces our max profit. So as you can see, uh, the maximum profit here is going to occur when you sell um, five uh, business class tickets and 25 tourist tickets. So this is um, basically the coordinate that yields the largest uh, profit and we want to answer um, the original question, because it asks how many tourist class seats should they sell. So in this case, uh, the plane, or the fly high um, company here, should sell 25 uh, tourist tickets and five business class tickets for a max profit. of 1325 so I kind of included a little bit more information than uh, what the question actually asked but this is typically what your answer should look like all right okay um, the only thing I want to talk about before we end this lesson um, is the fact that sometimes these corner points aren't going to be nice integers now I selected a, a problem where all of the corner points ended up being these nice little integers but in the real world sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes you might end up with 4.3 comma you know 25 and in this case um, because this is not um, applicable to the real world you're gonna have to round this you're gonna have to find a corner point you wanna find the nearest point that lies within your feasible region so it, you need to make sure that it still lies within the feasible region um, that would satisfy all of your inequalities but it has integer values so sometimes you will have to find a close intersection as opposed to the exact intersection all right okay um, the second problem here, this hamburger and hot dogs problem, this is just for you to try this um, on your own tonight. Um, I'm not going to check this necessarily, but you can check your, yourself with the key. Um, I would definitely do this, though, just to get some extra practice and to make sure you understand what the steps are. So nice job. I'll see you in class tomorrow.